Yo, what up? Josh Rubin from East West Healing and Performance. Today I want to talk about sucrose, fructose, glucose, carbohydrates, sugar, all these different things. Now, I feel that sugar, when I say sugar, I'm talking about carbohydrates, have really gotten a bad rap in our society. They cause high cholesterol, they cause high triglycerides, they cause weight gain, yada, yada, yada. But the problem is there's so many factors as well that can do that. And we really have to look at, are people eat, eating pastas and grains and pure glucose in a sense that's causing an insulin response when they're already in an inflamed state that doesn't allow sugar to get actually into the cell and causes high cholesterol and things like that? Do people have certain mineral deficiencies, vitamin A deficiencies, they're not getting out enough and getting enough light, are they thyroid deficient? So they're actually not converting the cholesterol. So we have to think about those things because what we're saying is don't eat carbohydrates because they make you fat and they cause disease. But if you really break it down to the cell level and you study the work of Gilbert Ling and he talks about this, you really have to focus on what's going on at the cell level and not superficially. Because if you break it down, if you look at any physiology textbook, especially the older physiology textbooks that aren't influenced by money and big pharma and things like that, in the food industry, glucose, glucose, glucose is our cell's primary source of fuel. I'm not sure how many times I want to say that or could say it, but I could say it a million times. Your brain's primary source of fuel is glucose. And you see this because in people with MS, Alzheimer's, epilepsy, they have low brain metabolism of glucose. That's why a lot of the times, besides having high cortisol and ACTH, serotonin, and prolactin, a lot of the times they do have a lot of the symptoms that they have, and they can't utilize the energy that they're actually taking in. And using things like keto acids from potato juice and orange juice actually work much better because the keto acids actually bind to ammonia and are converted into essential amino acids and allow for the uptake of glucose in the brain. So we have to think about this. Just like gasoline is fuel for your car, glucose is fuel for your cell. Now, I'm not saying go out and eat pure glucose. I'm not saying go out and eat pastas, breads, Pop-Tarts, Twinkies, all the crap that everyone's eating. I'm not saying that because we have to look at not what's going on here, what's going on at the cell level and affecting cell metabolism. Now, I got a lot of notes here. Let's start by what are carbohydrates? Well, you have simple carbohydrates, which are quickly broken down and converted to glucose for fuel. Now, you have monosaccharides like glucose, fructose, you got ribose, galactose, etc., and they're quickly broken down. You got disaccharides, which is lactose, which is glucose and galactose. You have sucrose, which is fructose plus glucose. And then you have oligosaccharides, which are basically mostly found in plant foods such as bananas. You have your complex carbohydrates, which actually require much more digestion in order for them to be broken down and for their availability. These are polysaccharides, which are several hundred sugars. You have starches, like your, a lot of your root vegetables, squashes, and of course your crappy breads, pastas, and rices, and things like that. Your conventional New Age grains, carbohydrates. And then you have your non-starches, which are your celluloses, hemicelluloses, pectins, things like that, insoluble versus the soluble fibers. And there are insoluble versus insoluble pectins. Now, if you study the work of P.J. Randall, in 1963, he talked about the inhibition of glucose in the body. What this means is, when you're inflamed, when the body's in a hypometabolic state, take your temperature. You're below 98, you're in a hypometabolic state. 95, 96 degrees, 35, 36 degrees Celsius. What's happening there is, because you're not getting enough glucose into the cell, for many reasons, we can look at one of the most common reasons is free fatty acids or unsaturated fats. They actually inhibit glucose oxidation. What this means, it inhibits the cell's efficient use of glucose. So now glucose can't get into the cell. It overworks the pancreas, can damage the beta cells of the pancreas, cause hyperinsulinemia, anxiety, things like that. You have elevated blood sugar levels. Sugar's not getting into the cell. You're not producing carbon dioxide and ATP and water, which is energy. So you get tired. You get anxious, you gain weight, you have PMS, you're infertile, the list goes on and on. You get hypothyroid. So P.J. Randall showed in 1963, this was actually showed earlier on as well in the 1800s by certain people, but he showed that free fatty acids from unsaturated fats, from not getting enough glucose in the cell, from not getting enough fuel, not storing glycogen in the liver, not eating the right types of digestible carbohydrates, not eating the right ratios of carbohydrates to proteins and fats. 
not eating the right frequencies of macronutrients throughout the day. Now, I'm not saying just eat carbohydrates alone. You always want to eat the right fruits and below ground vegetables with proteins and fats. But he showed that free fatty acids, let me rewind it a bit, when you have those altered ratios, you're eating the wrong carbs, too much protein, etc., the body says, I'm not getting enough fuel. You get cravings, that's your body talking to you. So what happens is the body says, well, I'm not getting enough fuel. It has an adaptive mechanism in the body. So it says, well, if I don't get enough fuel into the cell, and I don't get enough fuel for my body, I'm actually going to die and go into a coma. That's plain and simple. So the body says, well, what can I do? And if you watch my last YouTube, the body's going to release adrenaline and cortisol to mobilize glucose, break down proteins and fats to try to convert them into glucose. This is a huge metabolic, metabolic burn into the body and the liver, which creates more stress. You produce excess lactic acid and ammonia and things like this. So the problem is you basically catabolize your body, your bones and things like that, which increases free fatty acids. Well, PJ Randall showed... And Ray Pete also has talked about how free fatty acids actually block glucose oxidation, so they block glucose actually getting into the cell. They inhibit mitochondrial respiration, which is how your cells breathe and how they produce carbon dioxide, which is very protective. They lower metabolic rate. They suppress immunity. They increase lipid peroxidation, which is they facilitate the breakdown of proteins and fats in muscle tissue um, in the body, which just perpetuates the inhibition of glucose oxidation. And they decrease carbon dioxide and increase lactic acid production in the body, which is inflammation. Now, we have to look at this because is it really that, is it, is it carbohydrates that are the problem? They're not because it's our primary source of fuel in our body. Now, of course, we could separate and say it's the crappy carbs that are the problem, but it's not all carbs. We have to clarify that because if you're eating the right types of carbs, this doesn't happen. And you have to think about elevated blood glucose levels. You have to think about hyperinsulinemia. What's causing this? If it's unsaturated fats and free fatty acids that are causing this, at the same time, everyone looks at blood sugar levels to diagnose diabetes and things like that. But what about looking at, and you can study the work of, of Ray Pete and many other people, and they talk about how, how increased cortisol, hypercortisolemia, hyperadrenaline, producing too much adrenaline, producing excess growth hormone from being in an inflamed state, um, having increased prolactin levels, having increased glucagon levels, which is very common in people that are diabetic. They can actually release glucagon, but they can't shut off the mechanism to stop the release of glucagon, which continually elevates blood glucose. So why are we not actually evaluating glucose? I'm sorry, cortisol, glucagon. Why aren't we evaluating prolactin? Why aren't we evaluating uh, growth hormone and all these factors that can actually increase blood glucose levels in the body from not getting enough energy in the cell because of our diet or unsaturated fats blocking sugar from getting in the cell.